It is time to get to know Megan Anderson, who is having a freshman season for the ages for Fairfield. Very excited about this one. Locked on women's basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Locked on Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Magdal. Delighted to welcome you and making us your first listen every day. You guys keep showing up for us. Over 175,000 listeners in January alone showing up for us the way we show up for you six days a week. Make sure you are subscribing on YouTube wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, this is not just me. It is the incredible team across the universe of the next, the nexthoops.com, where we have over a hundred reported pieces about women's basketball every single month. <laughs> Got a lot coming for you today. We'll talk a little later about the fact that Kalia Copper on her way to Phoenix, broken at the next first by um, checking notes. That would be me. And so we will get to that, of course, later on. But first, we have to talk and have to is the wrong phrase to use because I have just been reveling in the season that Megan Anderson is having. This is a year where a lot of people are talking about a lot of freshmen and Juju Watkins is getting a lot of shine. Hannah Hidalgo, of course, from Haddonfield, New Jersey, rightfully so. But we cannot have a real conversation about freshman of the year without talking about you, your journey, and part of the Fairfield stags who are doing in incredible things here in the 23-24 season. So Megan, welcome. Take me through, if you could, that experience where Coach Carly reaches out to you. You guys are talking on FaceTime and the vision that she laid out for what Fairfield was going to be for you. Yeah, I mean, it all feels kind of surreal, you know, because it all happened. It happened really fast and she wasn't even there on my visit, obviously. So the FaceTime, the fact that she was able to be there some way meant a lot to me and then getting to meet like the coaches and to talk about the culture I think that's really what what got me here I hadn't even really met the girls yet but the way they talked about like the type of family that they wanted to build Mm -hmm. like it really does feel like a second like a second home here and I think that was a a big part of my decision when you thought about what your college career was going to look like I know originally recruited at Fordham uh, by Steph Gately who um, was let go of Fordham that should be a series of podcasts at a different time. And now she's over at FDU and here you are looking to build something together. And you talked about that family. How quickly did it start to feel like family and in what ways? Honestly, like pretty quickly, everyone got along like right away. I couldn't say that there was any kind of like issues with anybody. Everyone was kind of there for each other from the start. Um, But I think we've continued to build off of that. And I think it shows in our game too, how close and like how connected we are, which I don't want to say is rare, but I also want to say like, like it's not something you find everywhere you go. So I think that was a really important part. I I have to share this for the listeners. Your stats are, they look like typos, especially at this point in the season, right? You are shooting almost 70% from two point range. 68.5 is where you are right now here on February the 6th, you know, 56.4 total because you are shooting north of 41% from three. You're above 90% from the free throw line. When you think about how, I I mean, easily is the wrong phrase to use. I know how hard you work and we'll talk about some of the ways in which you do it, but how quickly it's coming. Are you surprised by how, how you're able to be this efficient this soon at the college level? I mean, I'm definitely surprised, but I think, Part of the reason why I am is because my team themselves, I've never met a more like a group that's more hardworking than they are. And they kind of like encourage me and motivate me to get in the gym every day too. And then my coaching staff, they're always there. They're supporting me. They're rebounding for me, helping me get better. And I think that's part of the reason. You are 40th as a team in assisted shot rate uh, overall in the entire country. It is a team that is extremely efficient offensively. If anything, though, 
your record is powered. And that record, for those who may not know, is 18 and 1. 18 and 1. Uh, voters, <laughs> voters, 18 and 1. Okay. <laughs> anyway, just throwing that as an aside, you guys are seventh in the country in opposing points per 100 possessions. So you're not just doing this at one end, you are killing it at both ends. What is it about the system that Carly and company have put in defensively that have allowed you guys to be so connected right away? Yeah, I mean, I think our defense is, I mean, when we play good defense, like our offense is much better on the other end. I feel like it's very like, like it's tough. Like you could be scoring, but if you're not playing good defense, like mm -hmm. at the point, it's just, it's kind of give and go there. But I think when we practice defense every day, and, you know, it's a big part of our game. So I think that's like a huge factor in our, on our scoring end. 18 and one, obviously a lot of players on this team have had success at the high school level, yourself included. When you guys were looking at goals to start the year, how does this dovetail with the goals that you had set for yourselves? I mean, you always want to win as much as you can. Um, I think 18 and one is, like I said earlier, it's just like surreal, the whole, the whole situation. Um, but I think this is exactly where we want, like where we can see ourselves. You know, we had high, high expectations for ourselves. So I think this is exactly where we want to be. The MAC is a really good conference. Uh, I don't think it gets enough credit, but it's also worth pointing out what you've done out of conference. You went and faced Fordham. Uh, Fordham's home and you won that game. You won at home against St. John's. The biggest ones that catch my eye, frankly, are the one you lost. It's at Vanderbilt. It's three points against a Vanderbilt team that's going to be a an NCAA tournament team for sure. And then to go at Rutgers and go win 78-54. I know Rutgers has struggled a little in the Big Ten, but that's a Big Ten win. Take me inside what the locker room was like after you come away with that win to come away with that 24-point win and what you guys are all feeling like and whether it changed the way you thought about what the season could be even. Yeah, I mean, it was amazing to feel in the locker room. I mean, everyone was hyped for it, obviously. Um, I think part of the reason why we were up, like, what we were was because of our connections. You know, we were just all having so much fun out there. Like, it was just, it was a great atmosphere. And I think, like, the way we played in that game kind of set, like, the bar for, like, how we wanted to play as a team further on. I have to talk to you about something. It's reporting I've got. I'm hoping you're going to be able to confirm it. As I understand, uh, you guys on Mondays do a drill called Make Up Box Outs. Is that true? Yes, yes, it is. Tell us what that is. So uh, Coach Erica, she keeps tracks of the Miss Box Outs that we have during the game. And then on Mondays, um, we'll do like, so they have two of our practice guys, mm -hmm. or if they're not there, two of the other girls on our team. And they like m intentionally miss the shot. And then you have to box out and get the rebound. And it, let's say you had like 15 Miss Box Outs. If you get the rebound, now you go to 14, then 13. If you miss the rebound, you go back up. So it just kind of goes all the way down. How long does that last? Depends, honestly. We try and get it done quick. Understood. Yeah. And just related to that, as we know, NCAA coaching staffs have been able to expand, and we've seen some additions made. It is my understanding that you guys have added a comfort pet to the coaching staff. Is that correct? Yeah, that would be Pudge the Penguin. Pudge, Pudge the penguin, not a real penguin, right? Just so we're no, no, just, no, I'm okay. little stuffed animal. How does Pudge help with this process? Take me through that. It honestly, it started as a joke because he was just sitting in my coach's office. So I like walked in and I had to like pick him, like picked him up, mm -hmm. and I was like, I was having. So I'm someone that's like very like hard on myself mentally. So they kind of just like made a joke, like, oh, we're gonna bring him to practice during your miss box outs, and then. They brought him to practice the next day and I like got through the missed box outs and I was like, like I was in a good mindset. So it's kind of just been like a recurring thing. I love it. Well, it, it's fascinating to see you guys, like I said, 18 and one running away with the Mac, which is a really good conference and 74th in net rating on the strength of what you've done. As you guys think about where you want to go. What is success this season? Is it a conference title? Is it winning a couple of games in the NCAA tournament? What does it look like this year for you? I mean, yeah, I think it's exactly that. I feel like we're taking it one step at a time, you know, one game at a time. So our focus is always on the next game rather than, you know, our future. But I think, you know, win as much as we can is definitely the goal. Cannot wait to see it. You guys keep on doing it. 
Megan Anderson, voters, freshman of the year, you need to make sure you're looking at her before you do. I'm sorry, I don't mean to make you blush, but it's true. Facts are facts. And top 25 voters, please, please, 18 and one. What else are you looking for? Megan Anderson, first of many times, I think I'm going to be covering you with this in the next level. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. We will be back after this with WNBA Free Agency and Trade T. I'm Howard Megdahl, and this is Locked On Women's Basketball. Locked On Women's Basketball is brought to you by FanDuel. And happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Super Bowl is a game you can watch on Sunday night. I don't think it conflicts with many women's basketball games, so it's okay. We'll uh, check it out. Uh, it's football, as, as I understand it. And so Super Bowl Sunday gives you the opportunity to not only grab the best seat on the couch, grab your favorite football snacks, you can also play some bets. FanDuel helps you do it nice and easily, okay? You can do a bet on which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and much more, all at Super Bowl 58. Today, if you join, you get $200 in bonus bets if your bet of $5 or more wins. You can do it over at fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. We're back in segment two and bit of a quiet morning, just a relaxed, easy morning here in the WNBA. Most of the moves have been made, and then a big one happened. Kalia Copper, Kalia Copper being traded from the Chicago Sky to the Phoenix Mercury. A big one, a North Philly reunion coming, Copper. Natasha Cloud, part of that team going forward in Phoenix with Diana Taurasi, Brittany Griner, going to be a very interesting team. This trade, though, has so many knock-on effects around the league. So we're going to talk about all of it here in segment two and segment three. The great Andy Costabile has the full package in a reporting over at the Chicago Sun-Times. Michaela Onyanwere, Brianna Turner coming back to Chicago. Less about the fit in Chicago, more about making the money work for Kalia Copper's deal. Signed last September. Copper committed to the sky last September. Was present at the press conference when Teresa Weatherspoon was introduced as the head coach and was sufficiently unhappy about the direction of the Chicago Sky this offseason that she requested a trade and that has been granted. Oh, what a repudiation that is for the Chicago Sky. It's hard to overstate it, but it, it's worse than that, okay? James Wade before leaving the Chicago Sky, did a lot of trading later for now. And so I'm going to take you back, if I can, to about one year ago today. I'm just going to read it out of the press release. The Dallas Wings have acquired all-star guard Diamond to Shields. The Chicago Sky, I'm, I'm going to emphasize where I need to emphasize. Okay, I'm going to be like all bold. The Dallas Wings have acquired all-star guard Diamond to Shields. The Chicago Sky's first round selection, fifth overall in the 2023 WNBA draft. By the way, ended up being Stephanie Suarez a couple of minutes ago, signed officially by the Dallas Wings. Oh, here comes the bold part. Chicago's first round selection in the 2024 WNBA draft. Here's the real bold. And the rights to swap first round selections with Chicago in the 2025 WNBA draft. Fireworks, siren, boom. In a four-team trade with the Chicago Sky, Phoenix, Mercury, and New York Liberty, 
the team announced today. In return, the Wings have traded the player contract of guard Marina Mabry to the sky. So what does this mean, friends? It means that the Chicago Sky are in a full rebuild here. They will get the number three overall pick in this trade in 2024. Who that will be, very much to be determined. Does Caitlin Clark come out? Does Cameron Brin come out? Does Paige Beckers come out? If all three come out, Beckers, obviously, to Chicago in that scenario. But what if they don't? What if one or two or all three don't? There are other teams affected by that, of course. But it means a team that on paper, that's why they play the games, but on paper is obviously a lottery team. Dallas will have the right, the right to swap in 2025. New York has the right to swap in 2025 with Phoenix. But the Mercury's offseason has likely, again, that's why they play the games, has likely made that less important in the overall scheme of things. But, oh, my God, the 2025 draft is stacked. It could be extremely stacked, depending on who decides to stay and go. And that deal has been made. Of course, on top of it all, Diamond Shields, back in Chicago. And it is worth noting, it just as a point of personal privilege, Diamond Shields, who's been through way too much, one of the most talented collegiate players I've ever seen. And we wish her nothing but good health. Diamond Shields, in a lot of ways, is going to be the number one option on this team. She's going to get the shots. We're going to get to see what she can do. And there is value there. And let's not sleep on how effective she is as a player when she is healthy. But that part's out of her control. That's out of everyone's control. So we hope for the best. And you also cannot win in this league with one, one number one option. You cannot do it. That's why these teams are gathering the way they can. Only just 12 teams total, and there's more and more and more talent every year, and it is getting concentrated. So anyway, that's where the smart money is. But we got more. There's more to it than that. What what do you do if you're the sky? Are, are you building around Diamond? Are you building around who you get in the 2024 draft? What do you do about 25? Are we really looking at until 2026? What are they going to do about things like the practice facilities and other amenities to make themselves an attractive destination? And can that happen under current ownership? These are legitimate questions, vital questions that have not been answered. Were they answered, Kalia Copper, a few months after signing a long-term contract, wouldn't have asked out of Chicago. There is one more big domino here, a six-foot-five domino out of Wilmington, Delaware, a very effective free-throw shooting domino. I trust if you listen to this program, you know which domino I'm talking about. But it is Elena Deladon, and in segment three, we are going to talk about it because Elena, what she does, what Washington does, is the last big question. Back with more segment three, Lockdown Women's Basketball, in just a moment. I got some fresh reporting for you. But first, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And BetterHelp does something really important, really important. There are times we need to talk. We need to talk to somebody who understands us, who understands our issues, our problems, who helps us think through what we need to do 
to become happier and more productive people. Better help, in other words, provides you the chance to get therapy and therapy on your terms. Okay. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and it's suited to your schedule. You go ahead, you talk to the better help folks. They get you set up with a therapist. And if you are unhappy with that therapist, you can switch for free. So go to betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. Again, so that's betterhelp.com slash L O C K E D O N N B A to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. Here with segment three and look, uh, I have said this on the show. I will reiterate it. The women's basketball world is a better place when Elena Deladon is playing basketball. We now know, and I've reported this previously, that Elena is looking for a change. She's looking to go somewhere else. Where? The options are getting limited. Real limited. That salary slot that would have opened in Phoenix for Elena Deladon and the Mercury were interested. Well, that went to Kalia Copper today. The New York Liberty, in theory, could add Elena. Elena would have to accept a reserve role. Which is kind of insane to think about, right? Bringing Elena Deladon off the bench. We've already talked about the fact that New York, by re-signing John Paul Jones, has not just as talented a player as anyone who moved in the offseason or didn't move, was eligible to move, but they've got continuity. You cannot sign continuity on the free agent market. GMs have looked. Can't do it. And then where else? Does Elena come back to D.C.? What does Elena do? Does Elena play in 2024 at all? These are all open questions still to be determined. But what we know is that the Seattle Storm are exponentially better with Necker Gwumake and Skylar Diggin Smith on paper next to Jewel Lloyd and Ezzy Madbador. That's a fun team. I can't wait to see that team. Phoenix, assuming BG comes back, and there's been no indication she won't, getting BG to sign off on this deal and agree to earn less to make the numbers work was a critical part of it, I can report. Diana Tarazi, maybe her last go around, surrounded by a team designed to win now, Kalia Copper, Natasha Cloud. It's going to be fascinating. Fascinating team to watch. Dallas wins. They're betting on continuity too. A lot of interesting teams around this league. Look, I'm curious to see the Atlanta Dream with Jordan Canada. With a legit, assuming her shooting does not regress, and I don't think it will. We've had Jordan on the show. She's talked about it. This was not some fluke. This happened from putting in the work. I think this is who Jordan Kennedy is, who she was with the Sparks last year. That should be an interesting team as well. There is a lot, a lot to talk about in this WNBA season. I cannot wait for it to begin. So much more to come. We will be back with you tomorrow, of course, as we are with you six days a week, talking all things women's basketball. We got a treat coming up later this week. Hannah Hidalgo. Good chance that she'll be in the National Freshman of the Year conversation, that's for sure, along with Juju Watkins, along with Megan Anderson from Notre Dame. She'll join us as well. Much more to come. So until then, I am Howard Magdal, wishing all of you a wonderful Tuesday. Welcome to
You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. 